Hello, welcome to Wildwood and welcome to our owl talk. We'll be telling you a little bit about owls in general, so let's introduce them. Owls are a very distinctive looking group of birds. Uh, they generally appear to be quite stocky with no visible neck. They have hooked beaks and of course they have very, very large forward facing eyes. There are over 200 different types of owl alive in the world today. They are found on every continent except for Antarctica. They are all meat eaters and they're famous for being adapted for coming out at night. There's some argument about how many owls are native to Britain. Some experts say four, others go as high as seven but we've certainly kept all the different varieties here at Wildwood in Kent over the years. If someone asked you to think of a nocturnal bird, so a bird that comes out in the night, odds are you instantly think of an owl. But owls don't just come out at night. Some experts say that the colour of an owl's eyes are a good clue to when it's most active. Dark-eyed owls, like the tawny, they, they are nocturnal, they're out at night. Yellow-eyed owls, like the snowy owl or the little owl, they are out during the day, they are diurnal. And orange-eyed owls, like the Eurasian eagle owl, they are crepuscular, they're out at dawn and dusk. The truth is, Owls will be active any time of the day or night if they're hungry. In winter, British barn owls are quite often seen flying in daylight because they're looking for small field mice and voles to eat. The reason why owls tend to specialise in coming out at night is simple. Few other birds are nocturnal, so there is less competition. All owls are meat eaters. Most of them catch small rodents, so things like mice, voles, shrews and lemmings. The larger types of owl will take prey such as rabbits and hares. The smaller ones they'll take creepy crawlies. And there are even several types of owl in Asia that specialise in catching fish. However, Hunting at night is difficult. The owls have three special skills to help them, and that's eyesight, hearing, and stealth. First up is sight. When you look at the skull of an owl, it's pretty obvious that owls have very, very large eyes relative to their body size. This is a common adaptation for animals living at low light levels. Other examples include cats and tropical tree frogs. Huge eyes will catch any available light, even the very, very faint light from the stars. But there's a problem. An owl's eyes are actually so large that they cannot move in their sockets. If we want to look uh, left or right, we can do that without moving our head. Quite simple. But if an owl wants to look left or right, it has to move its entire head to see. A commonly quoted fact is that owls can turn their heads 360 degrees all the way round. This is not true. Owls can turn their heads 270 degrees around and that gives them a 360 degree range of vision. If they actually turn the heads 360 degrees it would fall off. The way that owls are able to do that is down to their necks. They do have necks you just can't see them under the feathers and they have twice as many neck bones as we have. Humans and most mammals have seven bones in our necks. Owls have 14. And if you think that's a lot, some birds, such as ducks, geese and swans, 
have even more. Believe it or not, an owl's hearing is actually better than its eyesight. It's said that a barn owl can hear the heartbeat of a mouse from about three meters away, while a great gray owl can hear a mouse squeaking from nearly a kilometer away, half a mile. Some owls have taken this a step further. They have asymmetric ears. When you look at an animal with ears, they tend to be level either side of the head and the same size. But the owls with asymmetric ears are very different. One ear is larger, one ear is smaller. One ear is further forward, the other ear is further back, and one ear is higher up and the other is lower down. This means that the owl can get a far more accurate fix on the direction that a sound is coming from. Makes it much easier to home in on moving prey. Finally, there's stealth. Finding and locating prey, that's one problem, but then you have to sneak up on it. Owls are the masters of stealth. When they fly, they are absolutely silent thanks to special feathers. The edges actually break up the air currents as they fly, meaning that the owl itself, if it's not calling, will make no noise whatsoever. If you ever see an owl in daytime doing a long flight, something else they'll do, they tend to fly low to the ground. And that is so that their shadow will fall directly underneath their body and it won't give their prey any warning that they're coming. Unfortunately, this type of feather is not water resistant, and that means certainly that the British owls cannot fly in wet weather. So we hope you've enjoyed hearing some of the ways that owls survive in the wild, and we hope you have a chance to see some of our owls when you visit here at Wildwood. Thank you very much.